It's been a busy day of viewer questions today, so let's just go ahead and call it. How about Talk Back Tuesday? All right, here we go. We've had this question before. Tyler, though, he wants to know, what is considered the Boise bench? Like, what roads to what roads? He was born and raised here, and, and he lives off of Broadway, but Tyler's working on a project for the bench, and he just wants to make sure he gets it right. Well, it seems like well, Tyler answered kind of his own question when he posted this Google map of the bench on his Facebook post, adding, all right, we got the info we needed, which is actually generating a lot of conversation on Facebook, including from Aaron Bryant, who came up with this map, adding the bench and the upper bench, which started even more opinions from bench dwellers and, and beyond. Like, there's an upper bench? What is this all about? Sylvia said upper bench in South Boise and lower elevation. That's comical. Ashley thinks the depot bench, there's the airport bench, but no such thing as the upper bench. What are we doing here? Well, okay, so we're going to set the record straight by going all the way back to the beginning of Boise's bench. Okay, the Boise bench, where is it? Well, first, let's look at the layout of the valley carved out by the Boise River well before it even had a name. Tens of thousands of years of mountain snow melting and water running downhill unchecked created the levels we know today. There's the lower level, basically the river and all of downtown Boise westward. Then the next level, well, that would be the bench. West from Federal Way, north from the Boise Airport, and east from Cole Road. Literally, like a bench, a place for your feet and a place for your seat. So that's geographically what the Boise bench uh, has historically been considered and even what residents um, as early as, as 1900 would have considered the Boise bench. As for how the bench should be considered historically. It's the next chapter outside of that first five years of, of downtown core development. That first chapter began months after Idaho became a territory. In fact, Boise City was platted uh, and established on July 7th, 1863. So a city was started and getting in and out of it, well, those days, that meant trains. But before you can have railroad, you have to have water. Thus, the next chapter, which developed by diverting water south from the Boise River with the Reidenbach Canal in 1865. While all that was happening, in 1871, a man named William Morris moved to town. And again, we don't know a lot about William Morris, but we do know that he was involved with a number of, of organizations, a number of businesses. One of those as a manager of the Northwest Stage Lines. However, his duties and apparently his disposition were often disagreeable, as noted by a historian from the 1890s. An antique specimen of human nature encased in a body which was just a trifle larger than his soul and conscience. He was a mass of prejudices and sinuous vindictiveness. The reason I mention him, although he deserves to be forgotten, is that his character should go on record for what it was. And in addition, the names of the decent men connected with that corporation should be made more brilliant by comparison with him. Okay, so as a person, he may deserve to be forgotten, but as a property owner, not so much. The man with a mass of prejudices managed to amass a lot of land. And he was kind of the founder of the Boise Bench because he took action to acquire almost, well, more than 17,000 acres of land south of town on the bench uh, through the Desert Land Act. Which made more acreage available for a lot less money. Then Morris was also able to get a lot of farmers and businessmen to help finish the Reidenbach Canal. By 1891, there's more than 100 miles of ditch, 153 laterals within this Reidenbaugh system, and it irrigates 22,000 acres of land on the bench. A flood irrigation system that allowed for the blossoming of orchards, like apples, plums, and peaches. And it's a system that is still in place today, and why the bench became one of Boise's first suburbs. You cannot talk about the history of the city of Boise without acknowledging that the Boise bench is woven into that fabric. Okay, so now you know where the Boise bench is and how you can find it. And I can anticipate your questions now. Again, how far west does it go? Well, I guess that would go to the city limits. That makes it the Boise bench. 
Does Eagle have a bench? No, that becomes Meridian. Does Meridian have a bench? No, I believe that becomes CUNA. So that's how it all lays out, right? Hopefully we answered your questions.